Today and welcome to the AU Small Finance Bank Q4 FY23 earnings conference call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Prince Tiwari, head of FIG and IR. Thank you and over to you, sir. Yeah, thank you, Ashashree. And good evening, everyone, and welcome to a Small Finance Bank earnings call for the fourth quarter of FY23. We thank you all for joining the call today. The format for today's call uh, will be very similar to last few quarters, where we will start with opening remarks from senior management for the first 20 25 minutes of the call. And we'll follow that with the 30 to 35 minutes of question and answers from all the analysts and investors. Uh, to start the call, we'll have our MD and CEO, Mr. Sanjay Agrawal, share his thoughts on FY23 overall performance and outlook for the bank. He will be followed by our ED, uh, Mr. Uttam Tibrawal, who will share his thoughts on operating highlights for the quarter and the financial year. Besides them, we also have few senior members of our management team uh, on the call today to answer any questions that you may have. For the benefit of everyone, uh, and so that we can take everyone's questions, we would humbly request everyone to keep the number of questions per participant restricted to two and join, the, join back in the queue in case you have further questions. With that, I'll now request our MD and CEO, Mr. Sanjay Agrawal, to share his thoughts on the bank's performance and outlook. So thanks, friends. Uh, hi, everyone. Good evening. Namaskar. I'm very happy to speak to you on this call today as we recently celebrated 28 years of our existence and six years of banking. It has been an incredible journey and a wonderful experience to build a bank like AU. I met so many of you last year during the roadshow while raising capital, where we got tremendous support, affection, acceptance, not only of our business model, but also for me as an individual. Today, I'm happy to share that we have fulfilled all our promises made last year during the roadshow despite many headwinds like inflation-led high interest rate cycles, liquidity issues, and unnecessary negative perception around us. We promise to grow our business around 30%, and our numbers speak like this. Our deposits grew by 32%, now standing at 69,000 crore plus. Our assets after securitization grew by 26%, standing at 59,000 crores plus with pristine asset quality. We deliver sustainable and superior ROAs and ROEs at 1.8 and 15.4 respectively without any one-off income from Treasury or PSLC and of course, despite high interest rates. Our tech outlook remains very strong, key highlights being upgrade of our core banking system, enhancing data center capacity and scaling our digital propositions further with launch of innovative products like credit cards and current account. We actually serve 38 lakh plus customers at 1,000 plus touch points in 21 states and CUTs by a winning team of around 20,000 people. My reappointment as MD and CEO and my colleagues Uttam as executive director for full three years reinforces that we are walking on the right path with strong compliances, robust governance, and sustainable business model. I'm really thankful for you for this. The past couple of years have been personally trying for me as a seasoned entrepreneur of 28 years, as we have been the subject for numerous unfounded, unfavorable rumors, causing unnecessary commotions and diversion. I hope that now we can all move forward with focus on our performance. I, will look at the, I would like to thank all my shareholders for their patience, unwavering support, and being there with us through thick and thin. Another feather in our cap is the receiving of ADM license on our foundation day. It is not only completes our product offering to the existing customers, but will also help acquire newer segment of customers. I'm thankful to the regulators for validating and strengthening the small finance bank platform by not only giving us the ADM license, but also to another two SFB friends so that product offering at SFB platforms are complete and at par. Coming to India, 
we remain on a very different trajectory as a country of optimistic, determined, and hardworking people. We at AU are very excited to participate in India's story of 1.4 billion people with the economy expected to grow at 7% in the next 10 years by providing excellent products and services to build India. With a market share of just 0.4 in both deposits and assets, the opportunities are immense. Then the sky is the limit. Our business model is well settled. We will remain in identified market segments like urban markets for gaining deposits and for lending the, co uh, the core and rural markets. Our focus is to build sustainable, low-cost, granular deposit franchise where the challenge as of now is around interest rates. But we will continue to manage with strong emphasis on CASA and granular deposits, especially on a current account proposition. Last year, we grew current account deposits by 43%, bringing our CASA ratio to 38%, and CASA plus retail deposit base at 69%. This helps contain our cost of money at similar level to last level last year at 5.96%. In FI24, our margins may be impacted as the cost of money is higher and the peak is not over yet. Further, our loan book has been fixed rate, which also gets impacted in a rising interest rate scenario although the share is coming down and now it stands at 66% versus 74% a year ago. The share of commercial banking affordable housing books are increasing, which are important franchise business, but with lower yield. However, these businesses have lower credit costs and lower apex, and thus have similar ROA as per our other retail businesses. Further, our margins will be protected by continuous investment in strengthening current account propositions transition banking, focus on data and its capabilities, automation of credit, and process re-engineering. As we are investing to build capabilities, thus our cost to income level can be high. Moving ahead, we expect the advantage of scale to start kicking in, and by the year end, our investments in method lending, video banking, unsecured lending, and cross-sell will start positively impacting the PNL. There will be more pool of revenues from ADO license, well product, ETC. Credit card business is also expected to break even in the next one year. Further, we bolstered our strength at the broad uh, at the board level by inducting three independent directors last year, out of which two are women directors. We are now ten members strong board with eight independent directors. But talk about, about my own focus area. I think very importantly, as a CEO, I'm very excited for my next tenure. My area of focus is to build brand, which will eventually, which will eventually help us in deepening trust in the entire ecosystem, strengthen our deposit franchise, invest in innovation, data first and digital culture with emphasis on understanding our customer, which we call UIC, and to build strong HR practices. You know. Tech and innovation remain my top focus areas. You know, I'm not a tech a techie myself, but I'm investing a lot of my time these days in tech discussion with IT team, partners, and ecosystem stakeholders. We are working across all aspects of technology, be it core technology stack, digitization, automation, data analytics, and digital customer facing propositions. This quarter, we made significant progress in strengthening our core technology stack. We upgrade our core banking system to the latest version, and we also upgrading capacity of our data centers. In wheel business, which is the oldest one, we are implementing Salesforce LOS, along with underwriting tool by FICO, to enable straight through processing of vehicle loans. While we started this journey from our oldest business, we invest, we envisage to implement similar processes for all the loans in the bank. Another step towards operational excellence is to automate processes using robotic process automation and AI. I personally believe that in the next 10 years, every Indian will have a digital footprint and that would be generate large data sets. And as a bank are the golden source of data, those with capabilities to leverage data to personalize customer experience would stand as winners. At AU, we are enhancing our understanding of customer through in-house and alternative source of data with a long-term vision to have a customer data as a good and as a vast as what Google has. 
keeping in view all required norms around privacy and data protection. On the digital front, we continue to deliver innovative products and upgrade existing offerings. We have recently launched a digital current account proposition, set up card, credit card upgrade program, and industry first offering around bill payments over video banking. Our digital insurance and wealth proposition have also started gaining traction. And this year, we will further enhance and scale this and will be soon launching Merchant App. We are also announcing our digital payment stack with more powerful propositions around UPI, BBPS, FastTrack, EPC. I believe I am sounding like a techie guy. <laughs> so we have been preparing ourselves to leverage the opportunities available through the emerging public digital infrastructure in India. We are live on the account aggregator. We are one of the first few banks to live on the OKEN platform, and we are in discussion with ONDC team to implement innovative use case around digital commerce. We are also working with an RBI Innovation Hub uh, FinTech to enable financial inclusion. We remain on a journey to build one of the first, one of the best tech-led retail banking franchise for this country. To execute on our vision, we have strengthened our tech team and working with leading global tech companies, be it Amazon, Salesforce, Accenture, Adobe, Adobe, Oracle, and PCIe, etc. All these tech partners have been engaging well with us, and I'm personally meeting their global leadership to further strengthen our relationship and to explore areas of innovation. Another area of focus for me is to build strong HR practices because I feel people are the greatest asset. I'm happy to say that our senior team is quite stable with an average vintage of seven years, well balanced, and is driving the business with a lot of passion, purpose, and pace. On the hiring front, we are seeing a great action on people wanting to join us. Our recent HR practices are getting knowledge. Policies like ministerial leave for women, employees, and AU for forever pass is among the first in the industry inspired by our philosophy of Badlao Hamse Hai. I'm delighted to share with you that we have received the Retail Banker International Asia Trailblazer Award for our HR practices as just a great place to work third in a row and are one of the top 25 organizations in the BCSI segment. Among the many awards that we received last year, the prime one is to address as the best small finance bank of the country by Financial Express and Business Today. We are really humbled and grateful to all of you who have been a critical part of this journey. You know, in the end, I can assure you that we are more committed to build one of the finest institutions of the world I believe that building a bank may take at least 10, hour, 10 years to understand all the nuances of this platform. I'm very happy to say that we have, the way we have progressed in the last six years, despite so many real and unreal challenges that we faced, navigated, and sailed over. There's a time for consolidation to build a long inning. Like the batsman gets more confident with every passing over, Similarly, we are getting more confident with every passing year at this banking platform. We continue to lay foundation of building a sustainable, well-governed Pan-India Bank with a mindset of playing a long game. We are building ourselves to take advantage of the India opportunity over the next decade. We have figured out approach by offering the right product in the right market, deposits from urban assets and core, offered by the right team with the right tech, walking on the right path, building practices and processes which are standardized, scalable, and sustainable. Thank you so much for listening to me, and let me hand over to Uttam for the operation highlights. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sanjay. Namaskar, and very good evening to everyone. I hope you all are in good health. FY23 witnessed a series of resurgence of a demand across various industries with domestic absorption on the rise, along with increase on ground activity and a positive outlook for India's GDP growth. Our expectations for FY23 will remain well on track. As we conclude Q4 FY23, I'm pleased to report that AU Small Finance Bank has delivered a consistently strong and stable performance across all our businesses throughout the quarter and also the entire fiscal year. From build out of our digital properties to deposit growth to CASA growth and improved granularity to consistent loan growth with ever strengthening asset quality, we have diligently focused on excelling 
in every aspect of our customer centric business notably we have managed to keep our gross npa below 1000 crore thereby bringing down our gnpa to 1.66% at and net npa to 0.42% on the back of strong collection efforts while staying true to our philosophy of deep customer engagement and proactive problem solving having recently completed our 6th year as a small finance bank and 28 years as an institution i am proud to say that we have built a winning team of over 28000 plus employees dedicated to transforming our organization into an institution that commands the confidence of regulators the love and trust of its customers and the backing of its investors i am pleased to share that bank customer base has grown to over 38 lakh in the fy23 representing a growth of 40% over last fiscal year during fy23 we added 108 new touch points to expand our distribution to a total of 1027 touch points and serving our customers physically from 711 unique locations across 21 states and three union territories similarly our digital distribution has also been strong traction with our au 0101 app saw 90% growth in user base registration to 19 lakh customers with more than 10 lakh active users in march 2023 Our video banking channel has evolved into a comprehensive and self-sufficient digital franchise, offering 400 plus services and handling over 1,000 customers' calls per day. On the other hand, our acquisition of selling from customers via the video banking channel grew 100% during the year, with 2.9 lakh plus customers having over 1,150 crores of deposits, and 15% of customers also holding an additional product from bank. I'm excited to inform you that we have started acquiring current accounts using video banking starting April 2023, and we are confident to get a similar success on this journey too. For credit cards, the journey of our sourcing through video banking started in October 2022, and in less than six months, we issued over one lakh credit cards via this channel. Our overall credit card provision now goes more than five lakh cards, and the monthly issuance reached 50,000 plus cards. and monthly spends reaching 1000 crores in march 2023 also in line with our commitment to innovation and customer centricity we introduced swipe up an industry first instant card upgrade program featuring a digital compare and purchase journey on the merchant side i am pleased to inform that we have reached the milestone of 10 lakh upi qr codes with upi qr qr transactions doubling over the past year reaching 40 lakh in march 2023 Not only payments, but our QR-based lending solution has also seen a good start with close to 200 crores disbursed in merchant lending till Q4 FY23. Also in Q4 FY23, we disbursed 146 crores in personal loan, totaling to total disbursement of 804 crores till date, all through the AU0101 digital platform. The success in digital acquisition and engagement is also attributed to the growth in brand awareness. With over 31 crore brand impressions and more than 1.6 crore website visits in Q4 FY23, not only did the brand brand search volume increase by 30% in the fiscal year, but the website traffic has also grown by 2.7 times year on year, with 60% lift in organic traffic, translating to grow growing brand affinity towards the bank. We have also witnessed a 200% growth in number of existing customers visiting our website. to explore products and enable services moving on to our business numbers despite macro uncertainty and significant competition in the deposit market we have shown consistently strong performance in our deposit franchise throughout the year in q4 fy23 the total deposits for the bank grew to 69365 crores a growth of 32% year on year with the bank having 25.6 lakh deposit customers as of march 23 compared to 19.8 lakh customers in the previous year representing a growth of 28% year on year this fiscal year we prioritized customer engagement and deepening to tension our customers accounts to their primary accounts our focus on customer satisfaction better product proposition and continued engagement with the customers has led to an impressive 70% of current account and 57% of saving from customers regularly transacting with us on an average our transacting customers transact 33 transactions per month in savings accounts and 69 transactions in current account similarly 
Our product per customer ratio improved to 1.61 for, for savings accounts customers, excluding dormant and BSB accounts, and two products per customer for our current account customers. We have also found that engaged customers generate a lift in average monthly balance by two to eight times than those who are not engaged. As I have mentioned earlier, another important area of focus for us has been our current account deposits, which are resulted in remarkable growth of 43% year on year, reaching 3,680 crores on March 23, as compared to 2,570 crores in March 22. This helped us optimize our cost of deposits for the full year. The overall CASA deposits grew by 36% year on year, from 19,608 crores to 26,660 crores helping in improving our CASA ratio from 37.3% as of March 22 to 38.4% as of March 23. The increase in CASA ratio is a remarkable achievement in an environment where there was notable competition for deposits across the banking system. After resounding success of our first premium banking offering, AU Royal, we are excited to announce the launch of the AU IV program, a one-of-a-kind product in the industry this is an invite-only super HNI category product, and we look forward to receive the same affection and acceptance from all. Our strategy of focusing on urban markets for liability products has been successful, and we opened 58 new branches in urban and metro markets in FY23. We have already seen few branches which are less than one year old, ramping up their deposits to 50 to 100 crores, reflecting the positive response we have received from high-quality retail customers in urban markets. Our strategy of asset cross-selling to our liability customers has proven effective in engaging our customer base and deepen the relationship. Cross-sell of asset products to branch banking customers increased by 25% to 2,000 final crores in FY23 compared to 2,000 crores in FY22. Credit cards, personal loans, and business banking are among the key assets for liability customers, and we will keep ramping up our efforts here. Gold loan is another area where we are focusing in branch banking and currently, currently offering this product from 50 locations. We are in the process of scaling up our gold loan business and we'll keep you updating as we progress. On bank insurance, our partnerships with Adjusty Life, ICCI Prudential, Future Generali, IP Binda, Care, and Chola has helped us to drive customer affinity and engage customers for life, general, and health insurance. Through these partnerships, we sold and renewed over 5.9 lakh insurance policies in FY23 for a premium upwards of 640 crores. Last year, we have placed greater focus on wealth management and have completely digitized our wealth journey, making it paperless and signatureless, resulting in a seamless and superior customer experience. As a result, the number of customers having SIP has doubled from 23,000 to 56,900 in March 23. Consequently, our mutual fund AUM has increased by 62% from 103 crores in March 22 to 167 crores in March 23. We have also started distributing PMS offerings to serve our HNI customers through our partnership with Motilal Oswal Financial Services. We have acquired over 31,000 three one trading accounts, taking the total number of such accounts to more than 90,000. Now let me turn to our asset business, starting with these. For Q4 FY23, the vehicle industry sold a total of 48 lakhs units, units registering a year on year growth of 7%. Coming to the full year, commercial vehicle segment saw a year on year growth of 27%, while tractor, personal vehicles, and two wheeler segments also exhibited good growth, registering growth of 19%, 12%, and 5%, respectively. Keeping up with industry trends, we deserve 3,716 crores, a 1.34 increase from Q4 FY22 with an IR of 14.44%, marking a year-on-year -year increase of 101 zip bits. In addition, we achieved the highest quarterly dispersal for used vehicle financing at 1,750 crores in Q4. Our average ticket size and resistance was around 5.03 lakhs and around 3 lakhs at portfolio level, during two years. As of 31st March 23, the total portfolio of yields stood to 22,833 crores to 8.43 lakh live loans, comprising 52% new vehicles, 36% new and refinance vehicles, 10% tractors, and 2% two wheelers. The portfolio's commercial segment contributed to 46%, while the personal segment contributed 44%, and tractors contributed 10%. 
Our real business asset quality further improved with growth and PA at 2.25%. Moving on to our secure business loans. In Q4 FY23, we saw our highest ever quarterly disposals of 2,300 crores in SBO segment. Yearly disposals stood at 6,717 crores with year-on-year -year growth of 39%, with an average ticket size of 11.6 lakh and across 60,000 loans. The total SPL portfolio stood at 19,509 crores, an annual increase of 18% with portfolio IR of 15%, and GMP at 2.5% across 2.5 lakh light customers. With the increasing number of MSMEs and rapid formalization in the sector, we believe the size of the pie will keep expanding. As the EU has been serving this segment for the last 15 years, we have built a sustainable business model to serve the majority of our customers in rural and semi rural areas. We are well equipped to penetrate existing markets and venture into new ones. Moving on to our home loan businesses. As a relatively younger book, the portfolio of housing book grew by 63% year on year to 4,283 crores across 42,400 loans, with an average ticket size of 11.81 lakhs and an IR of 11.8%. In Q4 FY23, we disbursed 722 crores, taking the total annual disaster to 2,200 crores. Currently, home loans are available at 240 branches of the bank, and we have scope to expand coverage to all our touch points in due course to encourage retail cross sell Our GMP was stable at 0.33%, and it is noteworthy that much of our affordable housing work is also eligible for long-term refinance from NHP. Moving on to commercial banking. Commercial banking disbursed 2,848 crores in Q4 FY23, of which business banking and agri-banking accounted for 63% of business. The total commercial banking portfolio grew by 56% from FY22, reaching to 13,006 crores and now accounts for 22% of bank gross advances. Gross and pure commercial banking has reduced from 0.84% as of 31st March 2022 to 0.38% as of 31st March 2023 which further validates our underwriting approach and customer selection. The business banking portfolio reached to 4,938 crores as of March 2023, showing a year-on-year growth of 70% with disbursements of 1,005 crores during the quarter. The agri-banking business reached the 3,964 crores portfolio mark, showing a year-on-year growth of 75% with disbursements of 800 crores during the quarter. This growth was a result of several factors, including expanding our footprints in new geographies like Uttar Pradesh, East India, and Southern markets. Newer product initiatives and increased synergies with branch banking. Furthermore, our NBFC funding book has reached the 2,551 crore mark, showing a year-on-year -year growth of 25%, with disbursement of 601 crores during the quarter. Our REG book has reached to 1,224 crore portfolio mark, showing a year-on-year growth of 57%, with the assessment of 442 crores during the quarter. To sum up, looking ahead, the strong credit demand will keep the pressure on deposit rates, and we will need to manage our cost of funds. Thus, growing our current account business will remain a key focus. Our focus in large business remains on acquiring low-cost, granular individuals, small business, and contracting customers, and building a predictable, scalable, and sustainable deposit franchise. On our asset businesses, focus will be on bringing efficiency, productivity, and automation digitization, and leveraging existing customer base through cross-selling. We are grateful for the authorized dealer category one license granted by the regulator, which completes our suite of banking products for CASA and commercial banking customers. We will now, now be able to offer forex services for ICT customers, as well as acquire new customers for cross-border, trade, remittances, and guarantees. Looking back at the 28 years of our journey, I reminded of a tree which starts with a simple seed, grows into a sapling, and needs adequate nurturing and care before growing into a fully grown tree. In the past six years of our banking journey, we have tried to lay a strong foundation to build a forever bank, and our efforts towards offering customer-focused services and products have become visible. We have successfully transformed into a primary bank for a sizable part of our customer base, which is specified with growing active users on AU0101 and increase in customer transactions. We look forward to continuing this journey and serving our customers with even greater dedication and commitment in the years to come. And I look forward to sharing more with you in the coming quarters. 
Thank you. And now handing over to Tim for taking the call forward. Please take good care. Thanks. Thank you, Tim. Uh, yes, sir. We can now open the call for question and answers. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Participants who wish to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone phone. If you are using a speakerphone, please pick up your handset while asking a question. This is required to ensure optimum audio quality on the call. If your line have any disturbance, you may be asked to return to the question queue. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. We have a first question from the line of Bhavesh Kanani from ASK Investment Managers. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for taking the question. Uh, I have two questions. Uh, one, uh, you know, when we look at the ROA profile for this year, and when we think about the key trends likely next year, one would expect that NIM could be under a little bit of pressure. Uh, provisions which have been pretty low this year uh, can be at risk of going up. And uh, all the while, we'll continue to spend uh, heavily on strengthening our franchisee. So is it right to expect that the ROA for next year uh, could be lower than where we have ended this year? Uh, your thoughts on these, and uh, if you can help us understand the lower effective tax rate for uh, this quarter. Uh, hi, Bavish. Uh, this is Prince here. So maybe I'll start, and then uh, probably Sanjeev can add. So uh, as you rightly said, you know, uh, for the last two years, if you see, overall our margins have actually expanded quite well. And we have got the you know, benefit of the tailwind on the cost of funds, uh, given the lower liquidity post-pandemic. And even as today, as of today, as we have uh, mentioned in the presentation, we have managed to maintain our overall cost of funds for the last financial year in FY23 at the same level of FY22, right? So of course, there will be some amount of catching up uh, that's gonna happen with the lag that's happening with the entire industry, so, and that will happen with us as well. So you're absolutely right that there will be some amount of pickup in the cost of funds in the next financial year, right? And you also mentioned, um, you know, and rightly so, that we have also been using this tailwind to invest in our future capabilities and businesses. Like if you look at the entire tech investments that we have done, you know, coming out of lower cost of funds or higher margins and lower credit cost, we have used that money to upfront invest in our capability and we are now nearing somewhere near the end of that uh, investment phase. Of course, uh, we'll probably have one or uh, to next 12 to 18 months still to go, but the pace, the returns have also started crystallizing, right? So by the end of this financial year, you will see us monetizing our, some of the you know, key initiatives around video banking, around uh, your entire merchant lending, UPI QR code, or unsecured lending, uh, personal loans, cross-selling that we have been piloting, or even towards some amount of distribution capability around the insurance side as we have added some new partners, right? So all in all, I would say, and then obviously we have AD1 coming up, uh, and of course it'll take some time for us to implement it, but at least by the end of the year, we are hoping that we'll be live up and running, and there'll be some amount of, uh, you know, benefits will start accruing. And then obviously we have the credit cards coming up uh, sometime in FY25, when we are looking for the credit card business to break even. So all in all, there are some of the investments that we had made during the last few years, which will start leading positive results beginning end of FY24. So honestly, while we may have some cost inch up, but we are not too worried around uh, you know, uh, ROA trajectory. The ROA trajectory will definitely be maintained and probably you might see some positive impact by the end of FY25 because uh, for all the things that I mentioned. And even on the cost of funds, if you look at, uh, you know, currently we are in a pause mode. 
we obviously saw a very heavy or very uh, strong march in terms of competitive intensity but of course uh, we are beginning fy24 with slightly pause regulators have have put a pause on it the 10 year yields if you look at they are at about 710 so while there will be a intense pressure but as we have said we might look at as uttam ji also said in his speech we are looking to add current accounts we are also trying to see how we can play with the mix we securitized some of the portfolios last year to get advantage so keeping all of those factors in mind will the margins be impacted the answer is yes uh would it be really really raj i would not really think so i think it will be somewhere in the range of historically where we were between pre covid to now and uh, however the roi trajectory definitely is not going to be compromised uh boss do you want yeah, to yeah so bhavesh you know my uh simple answer is this that nim will get uh, pressurized you know maybe around 30 bps 40 bps in this year and because uh, already we are starting our cost of money around 6.4 uh instead of 5.96 the cost money was last year whole right so there will be a pressure on nims you know that is clearly there because it's not easy to also transfer the entire pressure on the uh, borrowers you know because there is a lot much competition also there but you know banks are generally not meant uh, to only build their profits from nims you know we have the other pools and like last year there was no pool from uh, pool income from pslc or from any kind of investment right but uh, i hope i mean we should hope that there will be other pools like you know maybe insurance income can inch up this year we'll have ad1 we'll start monetizing our uh, qr business next year it will be credit card so overall you know as prince narrated that we would able to save our roa you know and you know roa the 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 golden uh, i think the data is around 2% right you know if you earn 2% roa in this a uh, few years of our journey you know it will be good enough for us but you know maybe around 1.8 to 2% range we are hoping that we will click that kind of roa next year too okay one this will be and just uh, that small clarification on the effective tax rate being at 20 so bhagat uh, simal ji said so for effective tax rate uh, we have uh, received one refund and assessment order in our favor in uh, this quarter so that income has been Considered here as a reversal of uh, income tax, so that's why this uh, reduced tax rate. Wonderful. Thank you, and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Renish Bua from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi, sir. Uh, sir, just uh, two questions from my side. So one is on the uh, vehicle book. I mean, so. uh you know after a long 6 uh, 7 quarters we have uh, seen the absolute decline in the book uh, despite uh, you know there is a uh, in the city wind so just trying to get a sense what is happening there so uh, before bhaskar ji answers anish uh, let me just clarify uh, the vehicle book hasn't really declined in fact it has gone up uh, but yes you have to we have also secretized some business this year uh, or this quarter and because of that you are seeing in the absolute terms only on gross advances if you look at the overall uh, you know wheels book then uh, the growth has been uh, upwards of about 32% uh, so you need to have the quarterly book in the overall uh, to figure out the growth correct so so rinish hi bhaskar here yeah, nothing changes uh, all well It's just uh, as uh, Prince Aitim mentioned. It's just a matter of the securitized book. Otherwise, um, all products in the market that we are, the things that we do, we continue to do, and we continue to do the same uh, strategy of balancing the product and the rate the way the bank needs it. Got it. So let me put it this way. So we have not lost our market share in Q4 in Will Business. No, no, no. We have not lost market share. Okay, okay. Uh, rather, you, rather you would have gained, right, Basu ji? uh it is around the same because use we do more so market share when they talk about they talk about the new vehicles more and then we you know we play the game of that uh, so that's the reference point but in and around the same market share uh got it so secondly again uh, you know continuation of uh, what bavish was trying to uh, highlight is like uh, uh, let's say in fy22 uh, you know uh, given the uh, like the main trajectory 
and also this year uh, the credit cost was lower you know which uh, should ideally normalize in fiscal 24 so when we uh, you know uh, will have uh, two uh, major component uh, uh, should drive roi lower uh, you know one would be of course in in contraction and the uh, credit cost normalizing Uh, so how confident we are that we'll be able to uh, sort of sustain this 1.8 percent ROE in FY24 as well? So uh, my take on the credit cost cost is a little different. I strongly believe that this year also will have the benefit because of the top uh, asset quality you know uh, around us. You know you are seeing how we are getting it now. It's I think pre-COVID low it also is, is better than that, right? So one point six net NPS point four, and uh, I think every day when we are going on the ground, uh, we are seeing a lot much optimism around credit growth, credit compliance, repayments. So I don't think that uh, credit cost can surprise us in this year or even get to the normal level. And and again, I want to say you that somehow I'm able to figure out in the last six years that. Sometimes some pool help help you. Sometimes the other uh, other factor helps you, or sometimes there's negativity of some other things. So this year it may be because of name getting pressured, but it can be helped out because of a good asset quality, the other income from other pools like AD1, or maybe the monetization of our QR business and all those things. So it's mixed bag, you know, and we need to carefully craft our journey. So that is why we are hoping that uh, this year also, to be very honest, 2023. people were challenging us that you know we won't able to give this kind of roa but in the end we are able to deliver that right so right. let's hope for best and see uh, how the market also plays out in next maybe two 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 quarters because there is a pause on interest rate as of now right and we are seeing it you know like uh, bonds are coming down at 7.10 today right so i think we need to believe more in hope and and believe and see you know uh, We we will play our inning well. That's our sense. Got it, sir. A best of luck, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Yeah. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Subranshu Mishra from Philip Capital. Right. Please go ahead. I said good evening. Thank you for the opportunity. Two questions. First one is on the deals. Uh, if we can split the book into uh, various asset classes, what co- uh, what comprises of how much proportion? What would be LTV, HCV, cars, tractors, so on and so forth. The second question is on uh, the initial comment Sanjay ji made about break even of the credit card business in FY25. This seems very aggressive compared to any other bank in India. Sir, uh, there is no bank which can claim a break even in credit card business in flat three years. Generally, it takes around five to seven years. The largest of the banks in India have done it in as much time. So, uh, uh, given the fact that if To pointed out the average uh, le- uh, credit limit and the new to bank customers and new to credit card customers. I think we are going very aggressive on those parameters to uh, really have the break even faster and play to the gallery. Is that a fair uh, comment to make on the credit card? So uh, you can uh, explain both the answers. Should, Should I answer you the later one first? So, so you know, uh, so I think, uh, or you want to? No, no, no. Okay. So you know, um, I hope you'd have gone through our credit card presentation done maybe three, four months back uh, to really explain our strategy around it. So, and as you know, uh, Subhanshu, that we are more of a self-employed kind of lenders, and we know how to lend in poor markets over the years. so we are not playing to the galleries to be very honest because credit card uh, as a business is very lucrative post our all digitization across country you know and now it's a first product to be very honest for the payments and the oldest one and that data which we are getting every month you know and we have seen it uh, i think we have read in our presentation also that our average spend is around now 20000 per card per month you know our 84% is active you know we are giving around 50% cards to our existing customer base you know and uh, and you know we haven't done so much of investment to be very honest that uh, its recovery happens in 5 to 7 years and i'm 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 saying with lot of responsibility that our credit card will become profitable in quarter 3 of fi 25 
based on our uh, whole growth plan and the business plan in place. And Mank and team is doing fantastic job uh, and adherence to the data is, is superb there, right? So I would uh, like you to be, you know, we can be touch with the IR team. They can be in uh, touch with the Mank and team and to figure out our strategy there. But I'm absolutely confident that we are very rational there. We are very confident there. We are doing everything in, in, in the way we, we want to build our franchise, which is a sustainable and which is to be forever. So we don't we don't have any room to make mistakes, to be really honest, right? So I think uh, there you will find us in quarter uh, maybe two and three, maybe two or maybe three in FI25, making us uh, break even, right? So this is uh, the credit card commentary. You know, I would say Basketball. on Baskarji, can you comment on the wheels uh, data? Yes, sure, sir. Hi, Shukranju. Uh, from a split point of view, that personal card is about uh, 40%. I, we do a car taxi, which is about 12%. Our truck, which is the heavy commercial, which you asked about, is less than 5 Our LCD is around 4%. We do close to a tractor of 10%. We have 4% of construction equipment. So this is all we get spread, and we have about 2% of two-wheelers. So that's the story from the 2 to 22-wheeler that we generally have as a split on the book today. Understood. And just a follow-up. Yeah, one more data point here. Uh, just to comment on your uh, playing for the galleries, you know. So uh, this book is being handled and built by, you know, our ex-CRO, his name is Mayank, right? And he, he does not belong to a business or does not belong to a, you know, particular kind of mindset, right? He belongs to a risk mindset. And he's building this business from last two and a half years. And he's strong in his credit compliance, strong in his overall approach to do this business, right? So I hope, you know, he will make a surprise next year. Uh, just one follow-up question on the credit card, sir. What is the sunk cost? What is the total tech investment that we have done in credit cards, which is why it's breaking them even so fast? So, uh, Shubhanshu, hi, this is Prince here. So we have given that details on our uh, p &L slide. Right, so that comes to about for the this particular year, we come to about 156 crores for the last quarter of. I mean, that's a total investment, but of which 70% has been on credit cards. So that will be about 100 crores. There's also a corresponding income that we have shown in our other income breakup, uh, which has also been about 100 crores. So for the full year, I think we would have invested about uh, 300 odd crores or 300. Two, about 250 uh, crores on credit cards, and we have a revenue, uh, sorry, fee income of about 100 crores against that. Right. And of course, there's an NII. Right. But right. happy to, Shubranchu, I think uh, just to get into further details of this, may be a good idea for us to get you a meeting with Mayank to you know, answer further questions specifically on credit cards. FYI, we have also given on slide number uh, 31, Specifically, the overall ROI impact of all our digital initiatives, including credit card. Right. Best of luck for the credit card break even, and look forward to it. Right. Sure. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Ratik Gupta from Guardian Asset Management. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, hi, sir. Good evening. So, my question is on the book, uh, the uh, breakup of the fixed and the floating rate book. So currently, as we have a 66% in the floating rate, and assuming that the repo rate will remain the same, so do we uh, hope that the uh, fixed rate uh, breakup will go high? Or do we have a projection on what will be the sort of breakup between the fixed and the floating rate book? Yes. So, uh, you know, uh, sorry. Madhu, right? No, Ratik. Ratik, hi. Yeah. So this is Prince here. Uh, you know, uh, what we have given and what we generally uh, talk about is the mix on the overall asset level. So you see we have like four broad businesses on the asset yeah. side. Uh, uh, of course, uh, you know, you have wheels and SBL, which are predominantly fixed rate books. And then you have home loans and commercial vehicles, which are predominantly variable rate books, right? So uh, the overall composition of uh, these books have already been given, and we broadly think that uh, you know we'll probably try to maintain somewhere around this mix, where retail assets, which is home loans plus uh, SBL plus uh, wheels, would be anywhere around 65 to 60 to 65 percent, 
and probably around uh, uh, the commercial bank can be anywhere between 20 to 25. No, no, Ritesh. So I think uh, what I have uh, able to understand your question is, is that how we will reduce our fixed rate book, right? So I would yeah. say that we started, when, once we started a bank, right, it was 100% was fixed rate. Now in six years, we have reached at 66% as fixed rate and 36% as our variable rate. And as our retail book, uh, largely from home loan and commercial banking is going up, I expect my uh, fixed rate book to touch down nearly 50% in next three years. You know, so there is no there is no room that my fixed rate book will go up from here, because I am able to build my business banking book, agri banking, NBFC, real estate, housing book, and all are actually growing faster than my fixed book, which is largely SBL and wheat. You know, so so yeah. from here onwards, you will see a drop in our uh, fixed rate uh, ratio uh, uh, in asset. Uh, very gradually, you know, and in the next three, three years, we'll touch down to 50%. That's our overall assessment. Okay. And so second, my question, second question is on the borrowing and the deposit uh, uh, ratio. So if you see the borrowings have reduced, so are we looking forward to be reduced with the uh, borrowings and focus on deposits for increasing our capital, like the borrowing side, liability side? Yeah, so I think around the CD ratio, if you see, obviously, last quarter was very good on deposit growth. And to yeah. that extent, the CD ratio is currently at about 84, and which is basically, you know, what is reflecting on the overall borrowing percentage lower. But historically, also, if you see, our borrowings have always remained anywhere around 7 to 8%. And bulk of it is, uh, you know, refinance. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and that gives us it's a cost long, advantage. Long term, uh, without your CRR. CRR and SLR. Right. Right, so it's a it's it's part of our strategy of liabilities, uh, diversifying liability business, and the cost of funds, because refinance gives me that leverage in terms of a lower cost against our priority sector assets. At the same time, we don't have to maintain CRR and SLR on that book. So you see yeah. our borrowing somewhere uh, around the ratios that we are broadly. Okay, okay, that's it for my answer. Thank you. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Kunal Shah from Citigroup. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks for taking the question. So uh, the question is on fee income side. So a lot many levers now available, be it in terms of the increasing contribution of credit card plus uh, distribution and uh, AD1 license would also uh, help. So where do we see fee income to assets uh, uh, settle? What would be uh, maybe our aspirational uh, uh, maybe ratio for fee income to assets? And when do we expect to achieve that over how many years? Yeah. So, Kunal, uh, Prince here again, and if you see our entire fee, other income or fee income uh, ratio to assets for the current year, it has been anywhere around, uh, you know, 1.3%. And at a core other income, it has been about 1.4%, right? So, obviously, this was a year when we didn't have any one-off in terms of fee income. There was no treasury gains. There was no PSLC fee income, right? So this is yeah. a pure and pure, uh, you know, uh, core operating uh, fee income at about 1.4% uh, of uh, assets. Now, if we move forward from here and uh, for some of the levers that you talked about, definitely it should go up. Now, the question is at what level and to what extent we'll have to see, honestly, but, uh, as things materialize. But in the longer term, I don't think it should be any different from where most of the commercial banks are today, you know. Uh, as we go. Yeah. But, yeah. Just to add on Kunal uh, from Prince narrative that I, I strongly believe that uh, there is a change in insurance payout also from the recent, uh, uh, recent circular from IDA, right? So that will add up to the other income space. And we are also growing our insurance very well. Last year we done around 600 crore premium. This year we might be doing 800 crore. We started building a very uh, a wealth uh, proposition also. It's a small start, but we've got some kind of uh, income from there also. Our trade income, you know, which is was without AD1 license, also we got some decent amount and is getting traction. AD1 will start kicking from quarter three, quarter four. It's difficult to ascertain as of now. In my opinion, it will take two to three years to really get to the real level of that income. But I think overall, I would say that uh, we as a bank, you know, being an SFB, we didn't have much options also in our initial years. 
but we are now settling down um, um, as a bank and we are getting traction from everywhere right so the our the 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 fee income from our asset liability is getting stabilized uh, insurance and income will get more uh, onto the balance sheet now we'll, we'll, we are expecting well to set, settle down we are expecting ed1 to settle down you know so in in next 2 3 years what uh, uh, and of course our credit card income you know all those things the monetization of qr code business you know will start now is is around the corner now right may something will start from this quarter 3 quarter 4 and you know definitely from next year it will be coming up at a decent level on our balance sheet and next 18 to 24 month it will get a decent shape also so i think uh, i think we need to be a little patient with us and now i think time has come where we will start commenting very specifically that how much percentage it will it will be on our balance sheet side right so that's the overall sense um, you know we are getting internally sure and uh, secondly with respect to yield so um, maybe you uh, highlighted in terms of 30 50 bps uh, pressure on uh, names and if i have to look at it in terms of the cost of funds uh, given that now it's stabilizing there will be some catch up but uh, given the pause in the rates uh, looking at uh, the maturity of our advances how much could be the improvement on the yield side which uh, we could see which was uh, i think uh, maybe we are not uh, witnessed it uh, over last three quarters so just uh, uh, things trending as it is and looking at the maturity what could be the kunal uh, uh, you know so you now the i think if you go and see our asset built up the mix has changed lot you know like commercial banking book and housing book is now coming up to the size and there you know the yield is not high you know actually you know you need you need to play on name and of course you need to play on roa right because there is a lower apex there is a lower um, uh, credit cost you know so i i strongly believe that there is an incremental hike in our wheel business we are able to pass on some kind of hike there we are able to pass on some hike on our even sbl business there is some hike in our uh, uh, even housing even personal and space but because we are also building a book like commercial banking in overall yield on book it doesn't reflect right so that is why there might be a pressure on nim because you will see that our cost of money going up but uh, and yields are not there on the uh, on the overall asset but you know you will see the lower apex and lower credit cost in times to come you know so there is a change in our business model also and and that's why you know i come i narrated in my speech that generally bank takes 10 years to build right and we are just done our 6 years without uh, with the without noises right so i think another 4 years i think all these things will settle down and you will see that you know we are able to comment specifically on our names and all those things which is so essential for you people to forecast our future right yeah so with change in mix no uh, repricing benefit at all uh, uh, from current level of 13.4% in it I would say I don't want to comment to be very honest, but five ten bases doesn't help us, right? So it won't yeah, be like thirty forty bases. Sure. Okay. Right. Got that. Perfect. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Param Subramanian from Nomura. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi. Uh, thanks for taking my question. Uh, so I, i was looking at the slide 35 where you're showing the deposit mix uh, split between individuals corporate etc so if you look at it quarter on quarter uh, you know there is an increase 5 percentage point in uh, you know uh, from government and corporate while the individual deposits has come down so um, just wanted to understand how sticky is this deposit flow that we are seeing um, uh, more on the bulk side from government and corporate Uh, that's my first question i'll come back to it thank you rishi you want to comment huh. so uh, hi rishi hi well here so basically uh, you know uh, the uh, across the year the uh, the deposits between the government and uh, retail have actually moved more towards uh, retail Uh, only in the last quarter because uh, you know we uh, continued to focus on getting more and more granular retail so 
the composition between uh, you know the individuals and corporates sort of uh, looks uh, a bit uh, uh, you know slightly lower than the Q3 and we managed to win a couple of uh, good government deals so uh, which is where uh, these are transacting accounts that we have we won mandates from the government uh, the departments as well as businesses where we have uh, transacting accounts from them and uh, that is what has helped us to sort of uh, uh, you know get that number over there so uh, these are uh, these are not bulk deposits but these are uh, you know project accounts where the transactions are happening through us we are registered on pfms for uh, a state government project we are registered on the pfms for a central government project we have the nodal account with us so even the government account uh, money which is there is actually a transacting account and uh, it is a long term sticky relationship we that we have over there Okay, got it. Sir, is the funding cost here higher than what we see for the, say, the individual deposits? No, hi. Uh, I'm, I'm Yogesh Jain. So just to add, this government account on your question, uh, cost is absolutely less actually than, than my individual or corporate because this is, this is transacting account in uh, savings. So cost is lesser than my individual. And this is what Prashiji mentioned that this is nodal account. And in normal course of business, we get these accounts from central or state government. That is why uh, you can see that uh, government proportion is a uh, uh, little bit high. And in terms of corporate also, these are very small corporates. These are not big corporates. Again, again, kind of uh, 5 crore to 10 crore kind of category, which we get uh, a small corporate. So, so otherwise, otherwise, we are on course. Yeah, if I can just add to that, Param, uh, if you like what Rishiji was also articulating, if you look at a year-on-year -year trajectory, then it it is broad, it is exactly same rather, right? In in fact, it has come down on the government side, and corporate is falling percent itself. So as Rishiji was saying, throughout the year we have focused a lot on current accounts, we have focused a lot on savings accounts, and that has helped us to even manage the cost without necessarily looking for bulk deposits. But definitely in the last quarter, there was a competitive intensity, some amount of, as uh, Yogeshji and Rishiji mentioned, we did get some, uh, you know, savings balance money in some of the transacting accounts that we won, and that's the impact. Okay, fair enough. So what I understand is the mix will reverse back to something that we've seen uh, in the last few quarters uh, going ahead, right? Uh, Our endeavor will be to grow, you know, uh, individual and retail money, which is what we have always talked about, and that's the ratio that we track which is basically CASA plus retail, right? So CASA plus retail for us is around 69%. That was same as last quarter at 69%. And in March 22, that was 67%. Got it. Thanks. Uh, so uh, one other question from me. Just, uh, sir, if I can, uh, you know, Sanjay, sir, if you could, uh, you know, give some uh, insight into how you're seeing loan growth going ahead. You closed this year at 26-27% uh, on the gross advances side that you've reported. But going ahead, you know, how do you how you are seeing the demand environment and you know the growth outlook for AU say for the next couple of years? That's it from me. Thank you. No, no I think uh, as I narrated in my uh, call that uh, there is lot much optimism in every sector, be it real, be it SBL, be it housing, be it commercial vehicle, sorry, commercial banking. You know, so. I think it's about us. Is not about that how much really we can grow. The answer is we are looking at this how much really want to grow, right? So I think last year also we commented that we want to be in the range of 28, 30 percent, and that we achieved. If you add on our um, asset repatriation, we are near to that uh, rate only. And so we really want to build more on rationality. You know, uh, we really want to build more on sustainability. And, you know, and being in industry for so many years, I strongly believe that sometimes, sometimes uh, the bad books are built in good times. So, so I want to be really cautious here. And, you know, because, you know, deposits is also not available at, at, at will, right? We are, have to put a lot much effort there. And as you were talking about that, uh, whether we have a, uh, we, whether we choose or we have a right to choose, 
you know, is not there, right? You know, if government money is coming at at a, at a semi account, you know, whether it's three thousand crore, whether four thousand crore, whether two thousand crore, I need to pick up, right? We being in a small finance bank, we are early in our journey, so we don't have a choices. But you know, in the end, if you see our overall data profile, which says that our casa is thirty eight, our uh, retail is seventy percent, you know, our cost of money is around five point nine five. You know, and then of course we are building lot much around digital. You know, we are building lot much around the other aspect. Then you know, the, holistically, you see a bank going very strong. You know, and then of course our overall asset uh, rationality around growth, and then of course the asset quality. You know, so that makes me more comfortable that you know we have the business model which is sustainable, which is scalable. You know, and that's the way we really want to be in in this business. Okay, sir. Thank you so much, and all the very best. Thank you. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Nitin Agarwal from Motilal Oswal. Please go ahead. Uh, uh, good evening. Uh, congrats, Sanjay and Mitun ji, on good results, and uh, also for the reappointment. Uh, I have one question. Pakka uh, result pasand hai na? Yes, sir. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> and uh, so, so. On the deposit side, we have done very well, and you indicated that as an SFD, we have to take any uh, good deposit that's coming our way. But the excess liquidity on the balance sheet is, is looking quite high. So, if you can quantify that number, and now uh, looking at the potential margin compression and also the pro SBU profitability, showing that additional investments are not adding anything to ROA. So, what would be our approach on this front? Like, would we look to reduce this excess liquidity, or will we continue to raise deposits at this pace? No, no. So I think uh, I would listen. I would say that whatever way we have done in last six years, you know, whether it's our deposit strategy, deposit built-up strategy, asset built-up strategy, the quality around it, the cost around it, the people around it, the tech around it. Like you know, I'm very happy to see that our credit card business becoming profitable next year. we we are started we are already started monetizing our qr code business we are already started building our video banking as an option to branch banking right so i think i think i don't have a choice not to invest or to be very honest right because we are looking to build this bank for next maybe 100 years right and tech is essential tech is essential whole tech innovation is essential you know you will be left out so you know you need to invest with npci we need to invest with uh, amazon we need to invest with salesforce we need to invest with uh, visa and fico right those are coming like you know uh, from from everywhere now so i don't think that for a one year or two year to make my balance sheet very smarter or you know my roe is an roe is very attractive i should not do investment right so i will we will keep doing investment because that's the need of the r and that's the way the bank should be built on Because we are also earning very healthy ROE and ROA. Our, our ROEs are in north of 15 percent in spite of raising so much of capital last year, right? And you will see that ROE is coming back uh, maybe in next uh, two years, two years, whatever you expect. But I think then then it will be more sustainable because it will be tech-led ROEs and ROAs, right? So that's one thing. Second, you know, uh, the other question because uh, the excess liquidity was temporarily passed because the money we only got in last week. or maybe last two weeks of march and we already had deployed it and uh, again is we we are not in position that we had a lot many choices to say no right we say no to many things but if deposit is coming in current account or deposit is coming in saving account at 4 and 1/2 5% you know then we need to accept because we are a banker on a street uh, which is available for customers to do banking right so i think there also you know the access is not hitting us so much you know because optically on march it looks very heavy but uh, it's around 128% but as of now when i speaking to you on 25th of this month it already got uh, resolved right so so that's the sense you know so so it's a very very dynamic platform very operational platform you know many things we need to accept as as we do our business on a regular course you know but very confident and very excited that you know our six year has gone without much of disturbance around us you know other than the perception right 
and uh, we are deposit franchise our asset franchise our, de uh, our digital franchise our governance our overall overall aspect of banking you know we are taking every every box out of it you know yeah, and just to add uh, you know nitin one point that every like as was said obviously lcr has already normalized and for the last quarter as well we had reported the average lcr was 128% right and again being a, a small ba finance bank relatively newer bank you know uh, compared to some of the existing guys we do have to keep some excess liquidity i mean the regulation requires us to keep 100% uh there is a certain amount of board mandate as well given the uh, you know the kind of vintage that we have and nitin we we must decide so if you see the slide number 31 even in that uh, excess liquidity we are not uh, losing money so at least it's a uh, slightly in positive side so we are keeping the excess liquidity for uh, keeping the, our balance sheet strong and not uh, losing any profit okay yes, right got it thank you so much we wish you all the best Thank you. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Ashlesh Sonji from Kotak Securities. Please go ahead. Hey, hi team. Uh, congrats on the good numbers. Uh, sir, can you speak louder, please? Yeah, hey, I hope you can hear. I hope this is better. Uh, so, first question is on the SBL book. If I include the securitized book, uh, that segment has grown about seven percent QOQ, which is a healthy number. Uh, what run rate do you expect for this growth in the near future? SBL book, SBL book, SBL book should grow in the range of 20-22 percent year on year, right? Plus, plus minus one two percent here and there because we have got a scale now. It's is north of 20,000 crores, so so I think it will grow around 20-22 percent range every year. Okay, and secondly, you mentioned that you have taken some hikes already uh, on interest rates on the new originations in both SBL and VILs. uh can you quantify roughly a weighted average number or something the hike which you have taken on new originations so incremental in the incremental uh passively you have a data uh, yeah. incrementally in in one year term how much incrementally you are pass on to the borrowers yeah so we have already uh, if you look at the entire year we have gone up by 80 bits over what it was uh, last year at q1 q but the last The last quarter of last year versus the this, uh, this quarter, it up by one percent. So incrementally on a sequential on a quarter uh, wise, wise. But uh, if you look at during the year, we have passed on upwards of eighty five to eight weeks. Yeah. As well, we have largely remained the same course. Okay, understood, sir. Sir, any any idea what would be the sequential increase during fourth quarter in the wheels segment? uh the rate yeah the overall one yeah from, from quarter to quarter four yeah at so, the medium level about so it's around 10 bits 10 bits 10 to 12 bits yeah okay yeah. thank you those are all the questions sir thank you we have a next question from the line of pankaj agarwal from ambit capital please go ahead yeah thank you So, what's the reason behind doing more securitization this quarter? Sorry, sorry, what's the reason? Higher securitization. Again, it's a, it's about uh, optimizing your cost. Uh, I think we have raised uh, securitization at 100%. Uh, I think one what 100% hundred steps lower than the cost of overall incremental money in March. In March. Okay, so 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 at what rate the securitization deals are happening right now? Sorry, what rate? Sorry, Pang. So Pang, as we said uh, during the Q4, you know, uh, we securitized three thousand crores, as we have disclosed, and the average rate there would be about hundred bits lower than where we would normally raise term deposits. So it was, and obviously, uh, you know, it gives you a longer term funding, which is matched, uh, so helps us to optimize our mix on the liability side. and also helps us on the overall liability uh, you know how much growth that we can do and you know focus on retail business rather than uh, you know chasing deposits the reason i'm asking is that any, any bank who is buying this portfolio might be at least demanding 7 7.5% right so so you are saying that your incremental tld rates are more around 8 8 and half no no so this is more uh, priority sector loans 
you know, uh, typically you know that larger banks are short on priority sectors, uh, you know, and uh, while there is a PSLC market, but they always prefer buying the portfolio because it goes directly into their, uh, you know, investment book and stays with them for next three years. So to that extent, uh, they are willing to pay a bit of, uh, you know, subsidized cost or a premium on that. Okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Nidish Jain from Investec. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. So, firstly, uh, how should we think about cost to income ratio in FI24 and beyond? Uh, uh, it will remain at the same level. Nidesh, how are you? Nidesh, how are you? Good evening. Good, sir. Good evening, sir. Good evening. How are you? You got the answer. You were worried. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, the worry is around cost to income, right? Yes, yes. So, uh, how, how should you think about cost to income in FI24 versus FI23? Uh, no, sir, Nidesh, uh, you know, uh, maybe I'll start and, uh, you know, Sanjay can add. So, on the cost to income side, as you have seen that, you know, Q1, obviously, we went up to 65%, but, uh, you know, uh, we have uh, done well to manage the cost overall for the full year at about uh, 63%, where we had initially talked about the 63 And uh, as we have been saying earlier in the call, you know, that there are many more profit pools which we are just around the corner. So, uh, you know, we have been investing, and that's part of the reason why our cost of income has been higher. But uh, as we move forward, maybe end of 24, so this year, obviously, the cost of income should broadly be in the range that where we are. But as we move into FY25, and as I said, some of the investments start tapering off, and some of the revenue pools start kicking in, including AD1 and credit cards and other things, hopefully, you'll start seeing a gradual decline in cost of income for us. So, Nidesh, my take on subject is this, that we are focusing uh, more and more on this, you know. But uh, as you know, we are investing a lot in our tech and our distribution and to build this bank in a very sustainable and, you know, with a kind of forever mindset, right? So, uh, the best case, you know, for your own Excel would be that it would, can be a best case would be 60%. You know, but it won't go above 64%, right? You know, so I think that's the range. But ideally, we should be around 62, 63%. You know, that's the that's the way I'm thinking. But you know, it's it's too long a call. It's a full one year, right? In, we're just in April, so anything can happen. But uh, for your own your own calculation, it it can be done like this. Sure. Uh, thank you, sir. And secondly, uh, do we plan to scale up uh, consumer loans? Uh, personal loans or any other lending product over the next couple of years. We are uh, quite well on affordable housing. Not, not, to write. not really, Nidesh. I think we have done enough on our uh, product side. You know, uh, we are running around 15, 16 uh, uh, type of loans, you know, starting from wheels, then SBL and all those things. So we want to focus on our uh, unsecured book, uh, but it has to come through credit card or we want to really see how our QR code business can build up that and also our, how our data analytics helps us to give a cross-sell option to our existing customers. And both, all three are shaping up well. All three are shaping up well. As uh, I think Uttam told you that uh, we have done 800 crore of disbursement on our uh, cross-sell PL book. We have done around 200 crores on our QR code business. We have done around 1,000 crores around credit card. So all are shipping well, and I think we want to be really like that only for the next couple of years, and then we'll see how we want to progress there. Thank you, sir. Thank you. That's it from my side. Yeah. Thank you. We'll take a last question from the line of Samir Bisse from JM Financial. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, uh, thanks for the opportunity and congrats on a good quarter as well as the uh, the appointment. Uh, um, so as we mature in our uh, investments over the next 12, 18 months, uh, and with the kind of uh, credit quality that we have demonstrated over a large part of our history, uh, what would you see as a steady state ROA uh, as as the business matures in the next? Three to five years, or will will we be happy with the current range of 
1.8 to 2 percent. Uh, uh, just from a construct perspective, given that we have a large granular asset book, uh, 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 a liability franchise which is improving on the right side, uh, and and probably the curve of high investments will be over. So just wanted to get uh, Sanjeev's thoughts on that. Thank you so much. <laughs> no, no. I think it's, it's a good question, you know, and uh, thank you for understanding us because we are doing a lot, many investment to really build future, right? And if you ask me about my three to five uh, time horizon, you know, and if the interest rates, you know, doesn't go off the rack, right? You know, and it remain in one range. I, I strongly believe that this kind of interest rates are not sustainable, right? For any kind of uh, country, you know, so I mean, it will come down. So because you know, an ROA depends on names and other incomes and credit costs and all those things. An ROA. So, so I think I strongly believe in the next two to five years, the way we are building ourselves, and 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 now as of now, will be the complete in terms of our product offering once AD1 start coming in. So, so I think anything north of two percent ROA, you know, will be sustainable because we we do retail, right? And we do in high yield assets. Our cost of money can be managed, you know, and you know that our uh, collection and our ability to collect and manage our asset quality is always there. And and by bringing lot many tech led uh, innovations, you know, we'll will we'll manage our opex also. So it all will start kicking in, you know, from next year itself, right? So for next two, three years, you know, if things remain strong, you know, uh, we can surprise many people in terms of our performance, you know. So that's my sense. But anything about 2% is quite achievable, you know, given what we have done in the last six years. Great, sir. This is helpful. Uh, thank you and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. I now hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Over to you. Yeah, thank you, Sushri, and thank you, everyone, for joining the call and for your questions and for all your support. Look forward to interacting more. In case you have any further questions, kindly reach out to the IR team. Uh, this is Prince signing off from AU's management side. Thank you so much. Thank you. On behalf of AU Small Finance Bank, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.